Hey, good morning, everyone. Sorry about the uh, technical issues there. Uh, my name is Keith Blodorn. I'm the director of the wireless program here at, at ProSoft, and uh, want to talk to you a little about a little bit about industrial Internet of Things. Um, who, who here thinks that you're an Internet of Things engineer? All right, I'm looking like people are going like, what the hell does that mean? I, I don't know. Well, you know, let's let's start with what is the Internet of Things, okay? Well, if we look at what Wikipedia says the Internet of Things is, and Wikipedia knows everything, so, you know, I'm going to use that. It's a network of physical objects or things that have embedded uh, processors, communication capabilities, sensors, things like this to me. Okay, it was kind of, all right. So, um, that can exchange data, right, with, with the operator. Well, that, that kind of sounds familiar. That's uh, that does sound familiar. I'm gonna get these slides to work. I swear. <laughs> we we've been dealing with things that have networks forever. There we go. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. So, you know, we're used to working with device net, control net, and ethernet IP. We've got all kinds of devices with embedded electronics and capability in them. We see these every day in our plants. And we've been exchanging data with operators forever, right? Our, our operator controls, mine looks a lot better than yours, by the way. It's coming, it's coming. Uh, you know, our HMIs, our PLCs, we exchange data with these things all the time. So, you know, we really have been doing the Internet of Things uh, for, for a long time in manufacturing and automation, right? I mean, it's, it's a lot of the same concepts. So what's different? What's happening? The biggest difference is Internet technology, right? This has changed how we do all kinds of things in the, in the world, right? All these companies that we see out there today, uh, most of them that didn't even exist a few years ago, uh, these are all based on this internet technology that makes it easier to cross large areas, do all kinds of different things. If we look at all of the, uh, the, the internet, if we looked at the internet as a country, its GDP would be the fifth in the world. There's so much economic activity going on in the internet, it would actually be bigger than Germany. Um, in terms of its GDP. So a ton of effort and research is going into this, uh, into these internet technologies, and we're starting to learn how to use them in the automation space, in the industrial space. So let's talk about a couple of ways that we can use internet technology, the internet of things, uh, in manufacturing. The easiest one to think of, and probably the most common one out there, is to, to remotely access equipment. Right? Again, this is something we've been doing for a long time, but now we have the ability to do this using the internet over a much bigger area for a much lower cost than ever before. So connecting our, our uh, remote equipment, remote pump stations, whatever, whatever uh, getting that information out across uh, to where we need to use it, uh, we can now use that over. <laughs> say this way. Say this way. We can get information over the over the web and cross uh, cost of data. If you look at it that way, has come down tremendously in just the last ten years. the Internet of Things in machine and process control. We're now able to connect things much more easily without wires. And that's been a change that's really driven by, again, a lot of Internet technology that makes its way into the factor. Uh, being able to do uh, wireless networks to moving equipment, to rotating machines, uh, or to AGVs and things like this, uh, has become tremendously uh, easier than ever was before.
So we're able to eliminate a lot of these uh, maintenance hassles and things like that. Um, you know, things like slip rings and festoons and all these things that we you know, end up having to, uh, to replace all the time. Finally, for asset mobility, think about all your process equipment that moves around. You know, talking about AGVs or if you have, uh, think of it like a beer distributor with trucks all over the place. We're now able to connect to those pieces of equipment, whether they're inside your plant or out in the world, uh, much easier. Uh, mining equipment all over the place. Um, you know, being able to get more information off of these, off of these pieces, off of these uh, equipment, um, it saves us a lot of money. It makes up our processes a lot easier. You know, and it's all stuff that we've been doing for many years. <clears throat> that picture never came up. There. All right. There. Got it. So let's talk about a few things to consider if you're going to think about using internet technology process. Okay. Uh, number one is network migration. We talk about, anytime you hear anybody talk about internet things, you hear some ridiculous numbers for how many things are going to be, right? Well, we already have all these things in our plant. The problem is most of them aren't ethernet enabled. So how are we going to get them on the internet? We're able to take them up onto onto Ethernet, either wireless or, or wired, uh, to get more information, more data out of those devices and into these new applications. Cybersecurity becomes a very big deal, right? One of the great things about internet technology is there's so much of it out there, there's so much effort going into it. The, the downside is there's a lot of people out there who know how to use it and use it for not so great purposes, right? So we need to address cybersecurity. We need to do it through defense depth practices. Kind of the same way I think that we address machine safety. You look at what could go wrong and you look at your defenses and you put your processes and procedures in place. Uh, to avoid energy management is one of these areas uh, that has kind of been uh, really taking off recently because we can get data out of all these energy devices. When you go across the aisle over here and you're talking to the MCC guys, and uh, they're they're producing data about your energy usage in every motor in your plant. We didn't always used to look at that data because it wasn't necessarily important to our process. But now we realize we can. We got the data there. We've got all the technology to bring it in and use it. In IoT is to start looking at energy management as a as a starting point. As you're doing new machines, design that connectivity in. Make sure that you have a way to get your data out of your machines. Very simple. It could be a simple Ethernet connection on your device. It could be a a, a wireless LAN to get out into a plant wireless network. It could be a cellular mode. But think about that connectivity because even if you're not necessarily planning to use some of that today, you're probably going to want to use it pretty soon. The, the applications coming out for, for all this uh, information are just huge. Start small. IoT gives you the opportunity to do a little bit at a time. Just take one little machine, uh, one device that's problematic, bring that data into, uh, into the Ethernet, um, up onto the Internet, and start data. There's a lot of different ways that you can, you can do this, uh, whether, again, it's a cell modem or, or just the kind of it's already built into your device. Uh, but start to, start to look at that data. And finally, get help. Um, most of us, uh, the internet side of the internet of things, most of us use it, but we're not really, we've never really designed stuff for this, right? So, this is the last slide, we're done, so we're good. <laughs> this internet technology is wonderful. So, get help, talk to companies like ProSoft who have been doing network connectivity for years and years. Uh, we can help you with this, um, and uh, you know, 
make your make your Internet of Things installation successful. So if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to stop me or any of the blue shirts here, um, and some of the nicer dressed ones too. Uh, those are the managers.